Hello, everyone. Um, so I think uh, a few of you saw the video here today. Um, what I'm here to talk about is actually has to do uh, with the longer journey that we've been through and also to give you a sense of uh, where we see the market going, right? And why we see that India is poised to, you know, uh, really benefit from the entire um, you know, years of development across the entire supply chain as well. Right. So what you saw on the screen um, were the products in Europe, in different countries. But what I'm here to talk about today actually goes beyond the product. So it's not just about, yes, OK, there's a product there that's sold now in Germany or in Spain or in Netherlands. It actually has a little bit of a deeper, nuanced, um, you know, um, we're creating an identity which very rarely has happened for Indian companies. And that is something that's a big deal for us. Right? So thank you. So and this journey is not easy because I'll give you a sense of what it really takes. If you think back to companies which have created products that have far surpassed the category in itself and started to make an impact outside of its category and you know, start to make an impact and start to define a broader narrative. Right? You will think of these companies, right? These are just a few of them, right? You've seen, you know, if you've read about Sony and how it changed the perception of Japan. There's a book by the founder of Sony. It's called Made in Japan, right? Um, and all of these companies, they've created exceptional products. They were not commodities. They were not, um, you know, run of the mill. And while it is possible to create, you know, services, products that are commoditized and, you know, sell them in other parts of the world, very few countries and very few companies out of these countries are able to create products that surpass categories and get attention globally, right? And what we think for India to succeed in the global economy is that we need to create many more brands like this, right? And that is why we have a lot of respect for, you know, all of these companies and many more. If you think of, you know, Ferrari from Italy or you think of, you know, German companies, auto companies, all of these have come together because they've gone above and beyond to create something exceptional. They don't, you know, put something together. It's not for the purposes of trading or it's not for the purposes of creating something that is boring and, you know, while that may do the job, but identities get created only when exceptional products are built. And so that brings me to, you know, uh, why we think something like this is possible, right? Of course, it's incredibly hard to create such companies. Even for us, I'm not saying we're there yet. It's a long journey. But what I think is that sitting out of India, today we have all of the benefits that can help us create global companies which can reflect and sort of create an identity even for India. And that I'll give you the reasons, right? To begin with manufacturing, right? India today, already we produce over 20 million two-wheelers. In our case, I'm just talking about those um, you know, suppliers and those partners. But there's an entire ecosystem of manufacturing, no matter what type of part you require. Of course, in some areas, it does need to be built up where you know, China has an advantage. But the point is, from whether you talk about you know, metals, plastics, doesn't matter, right? You have manufacturing support in India and we've been able to leverage that. Here are a few of our suppliers, but we have overall about 150 suppliers and all are based in India. And that is because the ecosystem has existed in India for the several decades. So this is one of the reasons. The second one, talent. Now, there are three things in terms of talent that I can talk about that, you know, presents a very optimistic picture. The first is that we've been able to hire the best engineers in Bangalore because global companies have set up their innovation and tech centers here several decades ago. We started the company and very quickly we were able to you know, bring on board engineers, principal engineers, chief architects from Samsung, Intel, NXP, these kinds of companies. Later, we had folks join us from aerospace companies, you know, working at Honeywell Aerospace, uh, ISRO, Safran, Airbus, because all of these companies had set up centers here and now all of those engineers, skilled and very talented 
are in the are available in our ecosystem right here in Bangalore and Hyderabad in different cities in India right so that was an important piece the second part here is that we started to see an influx of people coming back from other countries so this was a big deal for us the first time someone working at Tesla reached out to me on LinkedIn I was a little surprised you know I never expected that to happen this happened I think about three or four years ago there was a person who said that I'm thinking about coming back to India and Ultraviolet is the only company that I think, you know, I would want to talk to. And there was a 12 month journey from an individual talking to us over a cold LinkedIn connect to coming back to India and joining us at Ultraviolet. Since then, I think we've had more than five or six people join us from Tesla, Rivian, a bunch of American companies, bunch of, you know, um, other companies, right, from across the, across the world. And that's the second part, which is Indians coming back from their roles in these larger companies. The third is we've started to see the influx of expats, right? Foreign nationals who want to work in India. And we've seen that at Ultraviolet and that brings together every kind of talent possible. And that's what's enabling us to do the kinds of things that we are today, right? So this was on the talent piece. But there's another aspect, right? Which is you have manufacturing support, supply chains, you have talent. But the next part, what I'm going to talk about is timing. And for us, that's an important piece. The entire world, everyone, you know, in terms of business globally, wants to de-risk their entire supply chain. And that's created a massive opportunity for what is now being framed as China plus one. Of course, China's a powerhouse. They've created their some supply chains. But the entire world wants to de-risk themselves. You heard that in the video. Someone said our vehicles are not Chinese. And that's seen as a positive thing. This is a matter of timing, right? Which is that India and Indian companies can benefit from this time to take advantage of this global situation where everyone wants to realign their supply chains. And that presents a massive opportunity. So all of these things put together is giving us an opportunity to scale up very rapidly. And I'll talk a little more about what we are doing now in terms of creating the most advanced and affordable electric two-wheelers globally, right? For us, we started out with a strategy which was a top-down approach. We were very clear that to make an impact first requires a different kind of um, positioning. We started out with high-performance motorcycles. And now we're getting into the second stage of growth, which is very high volume products as well. Now, this is not easy to build. I'll probably take you through a few more of, you know, a sense of what it takes to get to this point and what we've built over the last eight years of R&D. I mentioned the talent bit, the manufacturing, but to really get a sense of what we've gone through, we've today built out a very unique, scalable digital chassis, as we call it, where the core is a lot of electronics, a drivetrain, and a battery tech, the battery engineering and battery technology, and bringing that together with vehicle design to produce the platforms that we have today. Over a period of eight years, we built out the core subsystems that are necessary to build out vehicle platforms. And this meant that we had to build out all of the subsystems ourselves, right? From the embedded system, the BMS, the electronics, the powertrain technology, the vehicle control units, our backend systems in terms of how the data is processed and how it's presented as violet AI to our consumers, as well as the charging technology. Now, this is not an easy task. This required several years. And also, it meant that we were not engineering for the bare minimum. So, which is why, you know, we talk, that's the title, which is that we had to look at the most extremes of scenarios and what we're building is not just going to be used in India, but in every other part of the world, which meant that we needed the highest energy density. We needed the highest power density. It had to be very robust. It, can, it has to take vibration, impact, shock. It has to operate in areas where there's low connectivity or no connectivity. It has to operate on extremes of temperature and extremes of terrain. And all of that had to be validated across all of these different subsystems and built onto vehicles, which was quite a challenge. It wasn't that, okay, we'll build a low powered scooter, you know, which barely does the job. And then we try to ship that to the rest of the world. And what that meant was that we had to get into pretty 
intense modeling, simulation, you know, physics-based, and validation of these things. What you see are some examples in terms of, you know, aerodynamic simulations, in terms of what we did for the motorcycles, thermal simulations and actual thermal imagery of the battery packs, physical tests within wind tunnels, what you see there is the actual motorcycle inside the wind tunnel. It's one of the only wind tunnels that is available in India where you can place a full motorcycle inside. And all of this resulted in what we ended up giving to our customers and which they're using today. So these are some examples of customers. Harish is one of them. He's covered about 85,000 kilometers in 13 months. It's a pretty crazy feat if you ask me to be able to cover that kind of ground. But also that the vehicles are able to withstand irrespective of what terrain or temperature the vehicles are subject to. As well as, you know, there are several such customers who have custom covered 20,000, 50,000 kilometers and the vehicles are built to be super robust. And that goes back to our engineering based approach, which was build it for the most extremes of scenarios. Right? There's another customer, Bala, who rode from Chennai to Ladakh and back in 20 days. And the vehicle had no issues whatsoever. In fact, he enjoys his bike. And there are several such guys uh, who have adopted our electric motorcycles today. So this brings me to, you know, I was talking about the core technology that has gone into the vehicles, right? Um, which is our embedded systems, our vehicle control units, our battery engineering, the charging systems. But all of these things have to come together as a vehicle, right? And the vehicles themselves have, there's another layer to it, which is the consumer side of it. And on that front, we announced with our core technology, which was developed over a period of eight years that we're going to get into every single two-wheeler segment that exists. And we're doing that at a rapid pace, which no other OEM globally has ever done. Usually for large companies, each of these segments and each of these vehicles takes about four years to build. For us now with rapid progression, we're going to be introducing all of these vehicles in the next two years. And that is something that has been enabled by the eight years of upfront effort that has uh, coming together. Now, I want to talk about another aspect of building out vehicles, right? Which is for us, we were very clear that when it comes to automobiles, design and performance are at the heart of why people want to own these vehicles. And this is often an overlooked thing, which is, you know, people build out things for utility but that's not what, why people have pride in their vehicles, right? Everyone wants to be seen with something that is unique, that is powerful, that has the reserve to do more than what is normally necessary. And that's where design and performance come in as differentiators. So you'll see with every product that we have built, the kind of outcomes, the kind of design, the kind of, you know, what people appreciate about the vehicles, one side is the performance. Of course, it's really quick. It gives outrageous amount of warranty, 800,000 kilometers of warranty, top speed of 155 kilometers. And while it's a very powerful motorcycle, it also looks stunning, right? And we had to get that right. And it's not just this vehicle, right? We introduced another vehicle, which is called the F99. This is a racing platform for which we built a few prototypes. Automotive companies generally get into motorsport, right? And this is where a lot of the core technology is validated. So we built the F99 and with this platform, we even broke several speed records. So with this particular motorcycle, we hit a top speed of 258 kilometers per hour, which is the fastest Indian automobile ever built. Irrespective of cars, motorcycles, all put together, this is the vehicle that's fastest across anything that's built in India. And it doesn't end there. We built out another new product. This is the Shockwave. It's a lightweight electric motorcycle. Again, very stunning, very powerful, significant range, and inexpensive. This is uh, going to be delivered early next year. And this got a lot of people excited. And what took the market by storm very recently was our next product, which is the Tesseract electric scooter. This scooter, for the first time, we introduced features that are normally available in four-wheelers and cars, right? Things like dual radar, front and rear radar, front and rear ra dash cam, um, you know, collision warning systems, blind spot detection systems, all of this available on a scooter for the first time. And that's one of the reasons why we ended up with 
over 70,000 bookings across the country. Right? So what you see on the right is every single serviceable PIN code across India from where people want to buy these vehicles and that's what we're doing as a business. We have now started to scale up very quickly as well. We're now in 20 cities and we are going to be in about 100 cities by March. And the same has been happening globally as well. So we did multiple launches in France, in Spain, in the Netherlands. The Netherlands was where the video that was played was from. Um, and all of this has not been an easy journey, right? Because it takes eight years, it takes 10 years. But for us, we think now is the moment where several companies like ourselves can come together to build out for the rest of the world. And that's what we're excited by. So today we have started to retail, several hundreds of vehicles have started to ship to all of these 10 different European countries. We're shipping in India. And I'll come back to what I started this presentation with, which said from India to the world, right? So this is the kind of attention that we generally get wherever we go across the world. And we think now is the right time because of all of the benefits, whether it's the supply chain, whether it's China plus one, whether it's the talent availability, whether it's capital availability. Today, I saw a few VCs out here and everyone's talking about deep tech and AI, of course, but deep tech, deep tech wasn't even a word that was known in 2016 when we started. So we think now is a perfect time and that's one of the reasons why I'm excited about the future of India. Thank you.